I have some interesting news out of the Emerald Isle today, the great Catholic home of Ireland. Some of it good, some of it of the normal variety. Now before I start, I wanted to thank the members of the audience who sent these stories to me. And I wasn't able to respond initially, but know that you weren't ignored. It's just been a busy few days on my end. So without further ado, let's check in with the church in Ireland. And we'll even start off with the good news first, because Easter is practically here. And the triumph of our blessed Lord is just around the corner. So remember both of these stories as we prepare for the Feast of the Resurrection of our Blessed Lord this coming Sunday, and make sure to finish this Lent in a race for sanctity. First, to Knock, Ireland, we go for this story. Pope Francis has upgraded the Shrine of Our Lady of Knock in Ireland to being on par with that of the Shrine in Lourdes, France, as well as that of in Fatima, Portugal. From the Irish Examiner, we get this. Now, I'll have a full link to the story on my sources blog at returntotradition.org for more information. But from the Irish Examiner. The shrine is now to be known as an international sanctuary of special Eucharistic and Marian devotion. In his address, Pope Francis said, Ever since the apparition of August 21, 1879, when the Blessed Virgin Mary, together with St. Joseph and St. John the Apostle, appeared to some villagers, the Irish people, wherever they have found themselves, have expressed their faith and devotion to Our Lady of Knock. Fifteen people claim to have seen a silent apparition of Mary, St. Joseph, and St. John the Evangelist at the South Gable of Knock Parish Church. Father Richard Gibbons, the rector of the Shrine and Parish Priest of Knock, says, Today is a historic day. Archbishop Michael Neary, who is our Archbishop, the shrine is under his jurisdiction, applied to Rome for international status, he said. What that just means is the highest recognition and honor that a shrine can get internationally in the worldwide family of the church. So, he said, let's apply for this, and Rome was delighted to go with it. We were very happy. So we all worked together over a matter of months, and it came about then that it was designated as such. The Pope added the elevation of the shrine was a great responsibility. He said, you, ex you ex accept to always have your arms wide open as a sign of welcome to every pilgrim who may arrive from any part of the world, asking nothing in return, but only recognizing him as a brother or sister who desires to share the same experience of fraternal prayer. Archbishop Michael Neary said that the elevation of the Knox Shrine is a momentous event. He said it is most fitting that it would be announced and celebrated on the Feast of St. Joseph in the year of St. Joseph. Because alongside Our Lady, St. John the Evangelist, and the Lamb of God, St. Jo Joseph also appeared here on that August evening in 1879. Knock is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Ireland, and attracts one and a half million people every year. The upgrade elevates the shrine to the same status as Lourdes and Fatima. End quote. Now, I wanted to focus on the Fatima and Lourdes point that is being made at the end there. I have a video on the apparition of Our Lady of Knock that you should see if you want a very different take on the message of Our Lady there. It is, in short, a very different take than most others provide because Our Lady appeared with St. Joseph and St. John the Evangelist in full view of the Irish faithful, and the typical person on the street, and they, and they all remained silent. Now, there are aspects of that approved apparition that suggest it should be taken on par with Fatima, La Salette, and Akita, and I know it's a, that's a very different opinion than most people have on this. So for more information, check that out after this video. But that having been said, I take it to be a good thing that Francis has upgraded this to a shrine on par with Lords and Fatima. Now to be sure, the faithful on pilgrimage from anywhere were free to visit the shrine at Knock, and as you've already heard, many, many, many people have already. But this elevation brings it to the attention of more people. Many Catholics have never even heard of the apparitions at Knock, Ireland, and if they find out, they are more likely to visit that beautiful country to visit that holy place. You probably already know that Fatima and Lourdes get millions upon millions of visitors every year as it is. Well, at least they used to until recently, and will, God willing, again in the near future. And to elevate the Shrine of Knock to that level is a move that will bring more attention to the message of Knock, which appears at least to me to be a sign of silence coming from the church. Again, check my video out on that. It's a different take than you've probably heard before, and here Francis will actually repeat what is a more, we'll say, accepted version of the message of Knock. The Vatican News Service, the official voice of the Holy See, reports that Francis said this of the message of Our Lady at Knock. Quote, 
The arms of the Virgin outstretched in prayer continue to show us the importance of prayer as the message of hope which goes out from this shrine, the Pope affirmed. He recalled that in the apparition of Our Lady at Nock, the Virgin says nothing, yet her silence is a language, the most expressive language we have. The message from Nock, therefore, is that of the great value of silence for our faith. The silence in the face of mystery does not mean giving up on understanding, but rather understanding while aided and supported by the love of Jesus, the Pope explained. It is also a silence in the face of the great mystery of a love which cannot be reciprocated unless entrusting abandonment to the will of the merciful Father. The Holy Father noted that this is the silence that Jesus asks of us in the Gospel of Matthew. When you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And praying, do not babble like the rest who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. See the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. End quote. Francis's message here reflects the more traditional understanding of the message of Knock, but like I said before, I have a different take on it that I've expressed in another video. Of course, a lot of that doesn't actually matter all that much because, for the most part, there hasn't even been an in-person Holy Mass in Ireland for a year, possibly with some exceptions. Caesar won't permit it. The bishops have done what, they've, what we've come to expect from them. They've said that they'd like to have in-person Holy Mass again, but for now they'll persist in something familiar. <laughs> Internet Mass, which canonically does not meet your Sunday obligation to attend Mass, at least according to something the Auxiliary Bishop from Kazakhstan said last spring. Ireland appears to be one of the last places where in-person Mass isn't happening, and it would be in the place with the deepest Catholic heritage that this is the case that this is all happening in, as the legacy of St. Patrick and the countless saints has been turned away from, as the current state of the Church in Ireland seems to attest to. There is a talk of a synod of bishops there, like in Germany and Italy. And one priest says he plans to ignore the CDF uh, message that surprised everyone recently. And he isn't alone among the Irish clergy in that either. And will be joining the Germans and Austrians and numerous others who intend to keep promoting the work of Pastor Jimmy Martin, despite Rome saying otherwise. Some in Ireland have likened this to a schism that may be in the works with Ireland, as well as with the church in Germany. And it loves, leaves one feeling like this is happening just all too perfectly. And that's not surprising, and part of the underlying thinking is made clear when you hear that the bishops have petitioned Caesar to permit the Mass to be said with the laity. Imagine if the bishops had asked Diocletian for permission to say the Mass, and you get the idea of the absurdity of all of this. So remember, while you attend Mass, your brothers and sisters in the faith in Ireland will be going on their second Easter in a row without access to the Mass, and, without lim and with limited access to the sacraments, and emphasis on the word limited. So please pray for Ireland. And given the news I started with, invoke the holy name of Our Lady of Knock in your prayers for the faithful of Ireland. So what do you think about this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. And like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. It actually does help. And please pray for the church, especially for the faithful in Ireland. And make sure you really make these final days of Lent count as we head to Good Friday and the Paschal Feast this Sunday. And actually, also consider if after the octave of Easter, if this is not the proper time for us to continue doing acts of penance. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.